Hi everybody, Norma here. Just welcoming you to your Thursday afternoon slow flow class. Just checking in to see how everybody's been doing. Um, I missed you last week, but did have a good holiday. So hope that everybody is staying well and um, have had great days. So for today's class, um, it's a do as your own level as always. So what I will be offering is just that an offering. So um, modifications will be provided. So take this uh, practice to your level. Remember, I can't see you out there. So um, just listen for the cues and make any modifications that may feel better in your body. So uh, we're gonna get started in about two minutes. We're just about two minutes out. Um, so a couple of reminders, you do need a yoga mat for this class. No other props are necessary. If you do have a, a pillow or yoga block, Elisa, um, option to do that uh, just as a prop as we get to lower down on our mats or for um, a sitting posture to start if you wish to start. So we're going to uh, begin on our backs today. So if you're just joining now, if you can get on your mat into a comfortable position. Um, always a reminder to have water available for if you need any water throughout to take a break when you need it. And uh, yeah, let's have some fun. So we're gonna get started. Hi Lindsay, thanks for joining. So we'll just hold space for any friends that join us as we get started, but uh, for those that are here, welcome. And uh, we're gonna get started uh, in just a few minutes. So get onto your mat. And we're gonna start laying down in our practice today. I'm gonna remain seated just to uh, be able to welcome others as they join. So if you can get into a comfortable position laying down, we'll get started. So just as you get settled into your mat to begin your practice, just taking those first few breaths to get comfortable, feeling that support that your mat is giving you. Maybe wiggle around till you find that sweet spot. And thank yourself for arriving this Thursday afternoon to carve out 45 minutes to breathe and move and have some fun. And you know, do whatever shows up for you. Big permission as always to have fun. If it is just yoga, we don't have to be serious. Um, most important to come back to your breath and take this time for you. So thank yourself for carving out this time and welcome. Over the next few breaths, we're going to transition from whatever we were doing before we got to this point and knowing that we can leave that at the door or wherever your office is right now. Um, and anything that you choose to pick up will be there for you when you, um, our finished class. So feel that connection with your mat. Maybe this is the first time you've rolled out your mat this week or the sixth time, or maybe this is your first time back on your mat um, in quite some time, or maybe your first class ever. So wherever you are, welcome. And just feel the support that your mat is giving to you. And as you breathe, let your shoulders fall away from your ears. Let your tongue fall away from the roof of your mouth. And let the biting surfaces of your teeth unclench. How are you feeling on this Thursday afternoon? So just taking that moment to scan your body and see how you're feeling. So just awareness. Crap, if there's an area of stickiness or heightened attention, sending your breath into that area.
bringing your awareness to your breath now. Inhaling through your nose. Exhaling through your nose. With just that slight constriction at the back of your neck, at your throat, excuse me. It's kind of like a, that you're like underwater. So I'm forcing the breath there just to give an example, but as we're moving through our poses, inhaling through our nose, exhaling through our nose, you always remember that you can offer a cleansing breath out through your mouth with a sigh. If there's anything that you want to release, each breath's a new start. So with that, let's begin to wake up our body, offering small movements to your toes, to your wrists, feeling out your ankles, maybe massaging your head from right to left, just offering some movement to your neck. When you're ready, take your hands overhead, offer a long stretch with your toes to the edges of your mat, and then curl up into a wee ball, and just roll from side to side, massaging out your spine, having this little massage. We'll be able to get a massage for real soon. So these little snippets of self-care will take on our mats. So when you're ready, rolling over to one side or the other, whichever's calling you, and setting up for a tabletop position. Just gonna check the monitor just for a minute, see how everybody's doing. Volume's okay. Hi guys. Okay, let's flow. So setting our foundation for our tabletop, making sure that our fingers are still out wide on our mat. Shoulders are stacked over elbows, stacked over wrists for good alignment. We're gonna change things up a little bit today to warm up your spine. We're gonna sit back on our heels, stretching back into a modified child pose, and then hinging forward into a little plank. Traveling through this child's pose, stretching out long with your fingers, letting your shoulders relax, coming forward into the plank. So with your breath, traveling through two or three more of those. Maybe any extra movement that your body may be craving here. Knowing that this is your practice, what I'm providing is an offering and on your body and do what feels right. Coming back into tabletop after you completed that last row. Taking your left leg behind you. If you're feeling stable here, can you take your right hand out in front of you? Making sure that we're not sinking into our left leg and making sure that we're still connected with our shoulder of our right arm. If you're feeling good here and you want to challenge your balance a little bit, taking your left foot off the mat. So you only have two points of contact here, challenging your balance a little bit, firing up that core to keep you stable and strong. You feel like you're standing on that wall behind you. Good job, guys. Letting your right hand come down, left knee joins right, and just shake that off a little bit before we go over to second side. So this time, right leg comes along behind you. 
getting steady for taking your left hand up. And always be mindful that one side is completely different than the other. So without falling into your right shoulder or your right hip, can you take that right foot up like you're standing on the wall behind you? Foot is flat. Are we still breathing here? Firing that core to give stability. Great job, guys. Left hand comes down, right knee comes down, and just again, just shaking off our hips from right to left. Taking our hands just a few inches ahead of our, of our wrist now, tucking our toes, lifting our hips up and back to our first downward facing dog. Sorry, I think my music's a little loud there, just shutting that down. So in our first inversion, our first downward facing dog, giving a big generous bend to your knees. As you transition your weight from side to side. This time, bending right knee, can you press your left heel to the ground? Breathing into that. And switch, bending generously into your left knee now, taking your right foot to the ground, knowing that your right heel may never reach the ground and that's okay. We're trying to lengthen here as we progress. Practice. Breathing your legs back to center and offering any last movement maybe wagging your tail from side to side. Beautiful. Bending your knees, looking to the top of your mat and walking, jumping or stepping to the top of your mat. Inhale, halfway lift. So step back so you can see me. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, rise and shine all the way up. Taking hands to heart center. Mountain pose in your Tadasana. So in your first Tadasana, mountain pose today, just taking a moment before we warm up with our sun salutations, just to feel that connection, just like we did when we started, feeling that connection of your body to the mat. Can you see that foundation and feel that foundation in your feet, the strength that it's providing? I feel that connectedness to your mat. Beautiful, guys. Taking your hands up, reach up. Bring your hands to heart center. One more time, inhaling. This time, bowing over soft knees. Half lift. Exhale, plant your hands, step back to plank. As we're just warming up, let's take our knees to the ground, just like we started with. Elbows close by your body as you lower all the way down to the mat. Little baby back bend here just with a low cobra. Pushing up through table or straight through to downward facing dog. Three breaths here to reset. Inhaling together, exhale, sigh, let it all go. Bending your knees, looking to the top of your mat and traveling there. Halfway lift, exhale, forward fold. Inhale, rise and shine all the way up and bow. Halfway lift, exhale, plant your hands, step back through your chaturanga, high or low plank, always an option to lower your knees, keeping your elbows tucked by your sides, untucking your toes for your cobra or maybe upward dog is in your practice as we're warming up, being gentle, linking breath with movement, and we'll meet in downward facing dog. Three breaths here.
bending your knees, looking to the top of your mat and traveling there. Halfway left, exhale, forward fold. Rise up and bow. Halfway lift, plank to chaturanga, your version. We'll meet in downward facing dog. Remember guys, as we're offering and flowing through these chaturangas, nobody says that you have to do every one. So if downward dog is more your jam, or you wanna rest in child's pose, you do that, you do your, your, your practice. What is honoring your body on this Thursday afternoon? There may be some of us out there that may want to put some push-ups in as our chaturangas are going down through our planks, and you can do that as well. When you're ready, right leg floats up, bending our knees, stacking our hips, and just offering some movement with your right knee, slower than you want to, as we create some movement and open up that hip. Three one way, then three the other. Lower than you want to. Always want to rest these. When you're ready, back to three-legged dog. And take your right foot to the top of your mat. And place your left leg down. Slow crescent lunge. So setting good foundation here, our hips are forward. We're bending generously into that front knee, still seeing the toes of our front foot. And hand position can be whatever you want it to be, yogi's choice. Hands can be on knee or hip. Maybe your hands come to heart. Maybe you want cactus arms here. Opening up that chest your shoulders. We come back to our breath. Taking our hands to the mat now taking our right foot and generously pushing it forward. We're just gonna be gentle here. If splits is in your practice, we maybe do that later in the class. But uh, dragging your right heel forward, toes can be tucked on the left foot or they can be um, flat on the ground. And just generously taking inhale breath as we pour over our right foot. Feeling that nice stretch. Not feeling that stretch, you can inch your left knee back a little bit. Always knowing that you can pad up your yoga mat if your left knee is sore, giving some added protection there. Dragging our right heel back, helping it back. We're gonna take our right knee down into the table. Taking our right foot behind us, kind of like a kickstand, we're gonna take our left foot out to the side. So this is a modification, the side plank. So we can stay here, or if it's in your practice and you wanna take it up a little bit, you can come up into a higher version of side plank. Remember, honor your body wherever you are. Feeling that nice stretch as we open our chest up. Beautiful guys, for you guys that are in high, it's a high side plank, rotating back over and let's rinse it all out with the chaturanga.
three breaths here. Take a minute to get a drink of water if you want to. When you're ready, take your left leg up behind you. Bend your knees, stack your hips, and offer those hip rolls by turning your right knee ever so slowly, three times, one way. And then three times the other way. Beautiful, guys. When you're done, taking your left foot behind you back to your three-legged dog, and stepping your left foot or helping your foot through to the top of the mat. Taking our knee down, setting up for a foundation. Again, if you want to pat up the yoga mat, if you've got some any, any knee issues, please do that. So taking hands to hip, getting generously into that left knee, making sure your hips are square, and breathe. So you may want to take out a different hand position this time. If you're feeling comfortable, perhaps your arms go up and your gaze can follow. So I'll bring a little slight back bend here. Taking your hands to the mat wherever they are. I just unpacked my, my mat. And bending into that left foot like you're starting uh, the pedal of, uh, or the clutch of your car for anybody who drives standards out there. I still drive standard, believe it or not. Love it. So you're feeling like your foot is, is flexed, like you're pressing on that clutch maybe inching that right knee back a little bit so you feel the stretch, but again, not going so deep that uh, you're tearing anything on your inner thighs. So with an inhale, grow long, and your exhale, pouring your heart over that left leg. Where is your breath? Are you breathing here? Dragging that left foot back, stepping into your table, taking your left leg out like a kickstand before stretching your right leg long, reaching your hand up into modified side plank, or maybe you take it up into full side plank. Again, you can offer a, a kickstand with your right foot ahead. Wherever you are, coming back to downward dog and then rinsing it out with the chaturanga. Your version. As we're warming up, perhaps you come up to upward dog, maybe even lifting your thighs off the ground if that's in your practice, and pushing up through downward facing dog. And let's come down to child's pose. Just for five breaths here. So knees can be wide, stretching our arms long. Forehead comes down to the mat. Feeling that breath in your back body. Get a drink of water here.
taking that few moments to reset. Feeling the breath fill up your back of your body. Feel your shoulders soften away and surrender. Even if it's just for a few breaths. How are you feeling? Three more breaths here. When you're ready, we're going to meet in downward facing dog. Bending your knees, looking to the top of your mat and traveling there. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, rise and shine all the way up. Hands to heart center. So back in our Tadasana, our mountain pose, sitting up for tree pose. Just taking that moment again to feel that connectedness with your mat. Transitioning your weight over into your right foot making like a kickstand with your left foot. Standing up tall. So this may be where you're at for tree. So you may want to stay here. If it's in your practice, you can take your left foot up into your inner calf area. If it's in your practice, you can take that left foot and help it up into the inner aspect of your right upper leg. That's not in my practice, so honor your body, knowing that we just don't want your foot over your knee. So nice challenge to our balance here. Hands can be on our hips, hands can be heart center. Or maybe you wanna challenge your balance any, a little bit more and grow trees, branches here. Maybe it's a little bit windy out and you can make your tree dance. Or perhaps you want to even close your eyes, even if it's just for a second to challenge the balance even further. <laughs> Taking your left knee forward, closing up like a book. Left foot meets right and shake it all up. Great job, guys. Second side. Transitioning our weight now into our left foot as we make a kickstand with our right foot. Hands can start on your sides or at your hips. So big permission, you can stay here if this is where your tree is today. Maybe you take your right foot to your inner calf, or again, maybe you transition it up into the inner aspect of your left upper leg. Hand position can be different than the other, and knowing one side is completely different than the other, just awareness. hand expression could be your own. Now I'm going to close my eyes again just to challenge my balance a little bit. Oh, there it goes. I hope I didn't mess you guys up. Can we hold this for one more breath? You can, you can. Great. Taking your right knee in, right foot meets left and shaking that off. Inhaling arms all the way up as we grasp the wrist of our right hand. I'm going to step back so you can see me a little bit. <clears throat> so growing long out of our waist, our feet are shoulder widths apart. So breathe out long as we tend over to the left side. So making sure we come out long first before we hinge over so we don't punch into the left side of our body and hurt our back. Maybe you want to challenge your balance even more by lifting your right foot up. 
What's she doing with all this balance stuff today? Taking your right foot down, if it's up, coming back to center and shaking it all off. Breathing hands up. This time clasping your left wrist with your right hand. We take out long as we lean over to the right side of the room. This time maybe your gaze goes up under your left arm. And if you want to offer that extra challenge, taking your left foot up. Not losing that stretch in your left side. Letting your left foot come back down, come back into center, and then it won't go. Beautiful, guys. Taking your hands up as we swan down, down, all the way to our mats. Making our feet hip distance apart, can we grasp opposite elbows here and just let everything hang? So arms and ragdoll, just letting anything that maybe holding onto your neck, maybe nodding your head yes or shaking your head no, releasing anything that still may be there. Letting your hands fall, halfway lift, exhale, forward fold, inhale, sit back into chair. So with your chair pose, making sure that you can still see your toes. Hands can be at heart center. Making sure you can breathe here. Great exercise as we get ready for the summer that's coming core exercise as well as our booty exercise here. You know, the longer we, we talk and share, it takes the attention away from our legs quivering or shaking. Just wanting to add a twist here, taking our left hand to our right knee, taking right hand to back pocket, and turning our hearts to the right side of the room without letting that left knee come forward. Coming back to center, hanging on, I know you can. Right hand to left knee, left hand to back pocket, stretching open for three breaths. Coming back to center, folding, letting it all go. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, plant your hand and step back. Chaturanga. Three breaths here. Take your right leg up behind you, bending your knee, can you touch your right knee to the right elbow, stretching back. Taking right knee to nose, can you kiss it, curling in, stepping all the way back. This time taking right knee, touching left elbow, and stretching right foot through the opening of your left arm. Pivoting on the inner aspect of your left foot, taking your hand up, fall in triangle. Beautiful guys, coming back, back to three-legged dog, let right foot meet left. Take your left leg up behind you. You know where we're going now. Taking left knee to left elbow. 
curling in, belly button to spine, left knee to your nose. See you someday. This time taking left knee across to right elbow as you stretch your left foot on the outer aspect of your left foot, transitioning your right foot to the inner aspect, stretching up into fallen triangle. Beautiful guys. Coming back through three-legged dog to down dog and rinsing it out with our final vinyasa. All the way down. Good job, guys. So we're going to transition now to table. Taking our right hands, our hands underneath our shoulders, dropping our belly, lifting our gaze, just traveling through some cat cows as we slow our breath down before we come onto our mat. Any movement here that your body may be craving. When that feels complete, we're going to come down onto our bums and transition onto our backs. <laughs> Taking our feet as wide as the mat, hands can be on belly or out to the side, give you some stability. And just gently, very slowly, windshield wiper your knees from side to side. Letting your breath come back. Feeling that flow of going through your postures, your breath. Holding on through those more difficult postures. The next time your knees fall to the right, you can leave them there. Taking your right foot, hooking over your left knee gently taking your left knee to the right side of your room. Stretching your left hand overhead, right hand kicks up to belly. Just feeling that nice stretch into the left side of your body. Your knees come up to center. So you're like the figure four here with your right ankle staying over your left knee. Then stay here for figure four or step on the, the toe of your left foot, or reaching out through thread the needle, resting onto your left leg and gently pulling that towards you. Both feet are flexed. Feeling that nice stretch. Sometimes I like to rock this from side to side a little bit. You choose what's good for you today. Letting go of the glass with your hand, letting the left foot come down, right feet makes it. Just start with those windshield wipers from side to side one more time. Slow and steady, not a care in the world here, no rush. Next time your legs fall to the left, you can just leave them there. Taking your left ankle, hooking over right knee, gently pulling your right knee down to the left side of the room now. Right hand is stretched overhead. Feeling that breath into the right side of your body. You can rest your left hand on your belly. Feeling that breath into the right side.
So bring your left, bring your right foot back up so it's flat on the floor. Figure four position, second side. So okay to stay here if that's feeling good with you. Going again, that one side is completely different than the other. Just awareness. If you want to go there, you can reach through the window of your eye, and threading the needle, bringing right knee towards your, your nose. Keeping these feet flexed to protect your knees. And if you're feeling breathless at all, or if you're shrugging your shoulders, please stay here in your figure four. Two more breaths here wherever you are. Letting your left foot come down to meet right. And just gently, just a few more windshield wipers side to side before taking knees into chest. Just wanna cycle through legs off the wall just for a few moments before we get to our Shavasana. I wanna give you a few moments of your Shavasana. So if you're feeling comfortable stretching your feet to the ceiling, feet are flexed, hands at the side to give you some stability. And you can just pump your feet off and on the gas and the clutch pedal here. Just causing some, creating some momentum in your feet, in your, in your, in your legs, your posterior. I'm talking like a nurse here now, sorry. Um, just to allow anything that may have cooled in your extremities to get flushed back up through your lymphatic system and get back to your heart. When that feels complete, just shaking them off, bringing knees back into chest. And just cycling through any last movement your body may crave, and maybe you're craving to get your Shavasana so you, you can all meet us there. So stretching out long with your feet to the opposite edges of the mat, letting your hands open to the sides. Enjoying this last few minutes of stillness. Thanking yourself for the taking this time and knowing when the time is right, the sound of my voice will bring you back. Enjoy. Bring your awareness back into your body now as we invite all movements 
Feel our fingers and toes. As we begin to roll out our ankles and our wrists. Maybe open and close your eyes as you massage out your skull one last time. Massaging out, moving head right to left. Stretching arms overhead, toes to the corners of your mat like you're waking up from a long nap. Before coming in, curling up the ball before rolling over to one side or the other, whatever's calling you. Perhaps staying in fetal position for a moment before you come up to a seated position at the top of your mat. Taking hands to heart center, Anjali Mudra. Closing your eyes or lowering your gaze. Just taking a moment to maybe scan your body here. Taking a moment to notice any changes in your body, your heart, and your mind. Just wanted to take a moment at the end of class to express uh, thankfulness for the small things in life. So I'm thankful for you joining me in this class today and carving out this time for yourself and thank yourself for doing this for you. So it's these little things, right, that we can do for ourselves that um, make up who we are and build layers into the essence of you. So cherish those little things, whatever that is for you beyond being on your yoga mat. I know this has been a challenging time for all of us. Today, a uh, baby took its first breath. Maybe somebody said, I do. Maybe somebody made a new friend. Maybe somebody tried yoga for the first time today. It's the little things that can bring joy and fill our hearts up. Thank you. The love and the light in my heart bows to the love and the light in your heart. Namaste. So great to be back with you guys. Um, and I always encourage you to provide any questions or feedback to me. Um, and I hope you enjoyed your class today. And I look forward to seeing you again on your mat next Tuesday. Namaste, friends. Stay well. And enjoy the little things.